Welcome everybody to the Taunton Center, Bristol Community College's satellite campus for today's NJCAA Region 21 contest between Bristol Community College and the Lynx of New Hampshire Tech. You're joining us in progress here on a Wednesday night, our first broadcast after the holidays. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Safe holidays. And here we are for our first broadcast for 2023. Can you believe that? I'm David Cardoza, joined by Michelle D with the fancy camera work. And in the early going, it is six to six. New Hampshire Tech taking a long drive today. Jumper from the free throw line is good by number one, James Jones, double J with the jumper, six foot nine. His hometown is Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Again, New, ha New Hampshire Tech is in the maroon with the yellow lettering and Bristol Community College is in their traditional white home uniforms with the green, with the green trim. Okay, you're joining us here early in the first half. Loose ball, and they're gonna call a foul on Mr. James Jones. 8-6, early lead for the Lynx. Again, we're broadcasting here from the from Bristol Community College's Taunton Center, Taunton Campus. I'm David Cardoza on the call. 8-6. Thank you for joining us, everybody, on our live stream. Presented to you by FRC Media. Going back and losing it out of bounds. And they'll say it's knocked out by the Bayhawks. And the Lynx will retain possession. Long inbound pass to number one, James Jones. The three-pointer from the wing is way off by Joseph Canty. Rebounded by Stanley Ure. Ure, little stutter step. And they're going to call a foul on number 11, Anthony Gothier. Anthony Gothier, sophomore guard from Jaffrey, New Hampshire. Again, if you're just joining us, eight to six. Hazard. Oh, nice pass to them. And they're gonna call travel. Good job by the Lynx defender to get a hand on the ball. Causing the big man, number 30, to travel. Driving to the basket is number two. Joseph Canty, and there's going to be a foul on the floor. Four team fouls so far for the Lynx, and two for the Bayhawks. Bayhawks in 2-3 zone. They like to swarm. Motion offense by the Lynx. The floater by Jones, can't get it to fall. Loose ball on the floor. Bayhawks come away with it. Here comes Deion Hazard, the sophomore sensation. Who hails from East Providence, went to East Providence Senior High School. Hazard loses it off his foot. Number 11 for three, can't get it to fall. Jaden DeLumba sporting the new due for the new year. And they're going to call a foul there on number 30, Mo Sec. It looked like number five, Jackson Ruelk. Looked like he lost the basketball, but they're going to call a foul on Mo Sec. That's the third team foul for the Bayhawks. Again, Bayhawks in zone. 
12 on the shot clock. Good ball movement there by the Lynx. Nice drive and dish underneath, and they're going to call steps. Nice drive and dish by Joseph Canty, who flipped it to Jackson Rowell, but Rowell's traveled. New Hampshire Tech, their bench into it. They're playing man-to-man. -man. Jumper from the elbow by Hazard, it's good. Ties the ball game at eight. With 15 minutes to play here in the first half. Long way to go. Happy New Year, everybody. Three-pointer off the rim, tipped. And it's gonna go off the, it's gonna go off Bristol. Number 13, Aiden Rock, couldn't hold on to it. Neither could his teammate. Three-pointer from the wing is no good. Going high for the rebound is Mosek. Almost lost it. New Hampshire Tech in man. Ure gets it to the paint, loses it. Going back the other way is number 14. Drives to the basket, puts it up with the left, and it's good. Good defensive play, and... Putting the ball in is Andrew Fagan, six foot four, freshman guard from Philly, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ten to eight. Oh, trying to get into Mo Sec. And number 14 with another good defensive play. Oh, and losing it. Hazard. Nice little step. Oh, what a block. Well, number 14 all over the place. Canty kicks it out to three. And Ruel can't connect. Oh, nice pass inside to Aiden Rock, but he can't, can't get it to go. Another loose ball. Stanley Ure gets it to Aiden Rock and going up high. Wow, be careful. Andrew Fagans is all over the place defensively. Ten eight. Thirteen thirty to play. Andrew Fagans, number 14, went high to try to get the block shot on Aiden Rock. And Aiden Rock hits the first free throw. We have a substitution on the court. Andrew Fagans will go out, number 23, Jonathan Hernandez. Sophomore guard, six foot three, hails from New Britain, Connecticut. Close game early on, 10-9. Five team fouls. So far for the uh, visiting Lynx. Three for the Bayhawks. Shooting one more is Aiden Rock. The freshman forward. Second free throw was good. Aiden Rock has been a rock in the first half of the season for Bristol. The jumper by Ruelk is no good from the elbow. Loose ball on the floor. Stanley Ure hauls it in. Ure going all the way to the basket, takes it strong. Stanley Ure seen an opening in the paint and he took it right to the rack. And he gives the Bayhawks a 12 to 10 lead. Good defense here by the Bayhawks. That 2-3 zone, giving the Lynx trouble. And Ruelk loses it. Mosek. Mosek, the big man, taking it to the rack, puts it up and in. Oh, Mosek getting her done. 14 to 10 Bayhawks. We'll take a break here on the court. I'm David Cadoza. This is FRC Media. This is Bayhawks basketball. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to the Taunton Center. Bristol Community College campus, Taunton campus. Right up the street on Route 24. And the Bayhawks are up 14 to 10. Coming up on 12 and a half to play.
A lot of intensity. A lot of intensity in this builder right now. And let's see, we got New Hampshire Tech inbounding underneath their own basket. Bristol matched up man off the inbound. Loose ball on the floor, and it looks like we're going to have a foul on the floor. And they're going to call the foul on Jason DeLumba. And both teams have five team fouls. And New Hampshire, New Hampshire Tech, Technical Institute, NHTI, they'll inbound. Oh, a cutting Canty puts it up. The floater's no good, but Ruelk is good. Jackson Ruelk from Belmont, New Hampshire, freshman guard, gets the, gets the rebound and brings the Lynx within two. Has it with the basketball to Delumba. Oh, Mo Selk getting double team. Has it for three. Can't get it to fall, and it'll be Lynx basketball. Oh, that ball went sailing out of bounds. Canty was trying to get it to Jones, I presume, underneath the basket, but it went, sailed on him. Lynx turned the ball over. Here's DeLumba. DeLumba, deep three. Nice rotation, but went out the side of the rim. Looked like it was good out of his hand. Oh, nice pass. Nice touch pass there to Ruelk on the pass from number three, Sean Riley. Mo Sek went up to, the, to try to block that. All he got was backboard, and this game is tied. That was a pretty pass. Jumper from the free throw line by Dion Hazard, can't get it to fall. Ruelk gets it up. 17-foot jumper, no good. Ruelk went up for the tip, couldn't get it, couldn't get it to go. DeLumba jump step into the paint. And I believe, yeah, he picks up the, he picks up the foul. And Jaden DeLumba will step up to the free throw line. <laughs> Smoothly sinks that first one. Again, like the shoes. Peach. It looks like, it looks like a peach. Like a peachy pink. Michelle disagrees with me. <laughs> front rims. Front rims the, first, the second free throw. Bayhawks, one point lead. Jones, the floater is good. Jordan B Jones, kind of be a double team. He had he had Aiden rocking back of him, and then he turned towards the big man most second, just put it over him. Ure loses it, going the other way. Canty. Oh, what a block by, oh, Mo second, and he takes a digger. I think he wanted to stare uh, Mr. Canty down, and as he was doing that, not so gracefully, he falls down. But nice block nonetheless. It's a hell of a block. Oh, nice cut to the basket of Canny off the pass from Sean Riley. And they're going to call. Not sure who they call the foul, foul there. The foul nonetheless. 16 to 15, the Lynx have the lead. Joseph Canty from Norwalk, Connecticut. 
Freshman guard, five foot eight. Fast as heck. First free throw. Gets the bounce on that one. Sean Riley from Washington, D.C., six foot four, sophomore guard. He's had some nice, nice passes. Couple nice assists. Links, links are moving the ball well on that zone by Bristol, which can be very effective. We know that. Driving to his left. And number four gets it back up to Stanley Ure. Ure dribbles into the paint, tries to put it up, block. Oh, Riley to Canty. And he gets it to fall. I don't know how he got that up, up off the glass, but he hung on the air just long enough. Put that ball high up the glass. He got the, got the friendly roll. And again, Sean Riley, great vision. He'll come out of the game now. Number four, Richard Hartley. Another guy from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Five foot seven freshman guard. And Sean Riley, who's had a good first half, finding teammates. Second free throw is good, 21 to 15. And just like that, the Lynx have crept up and gotten a six point lead. Hazard, oh nice flip underneath, going into the paint. And Hazard gets that to go and a timeout on the floor. Coach Brian Fernandes calls a timeout after the made basket. We're gonna take a timeout here on FRC Media. We'll be right back on FRC Media, your Bayhawks broadcasting network. Welcome back, everybody. 21 to 17. 940 to play here in the first half. From Bristol Community College's Taunton campus. Here comes Joseph Canty. Canty kicks it back out. Hartley, deep three off the mark. Rebounded high by Jones, a six foot nine big man. And he's upset he couldn't get that one to fall. But nice strong rebound there by Mr. Jones. James Jones Jr. Six foot nine sophomore center from Philadelphia, PA. Gets the bounce on that one. Link said that they've been getting some friendly bounces from the field and from the free throw line. Second free throw was good by the big man. 23-17. Approaching the nine minute mark in the first half. Bayhawks had a lead for a minute. And that's about it. Ure going strong to the basket. Can't get the, can't get the lay in the fall. Had the open path, has the speed. Three-pointer by Ruelk. Can't get it to fall. High for the rebound is Hazard. And he's going to be fouled. Fouled. And both teams are in the penalty right now, so the Bayhawks will be shooting free throws. Seven team foul from the by the Lynx. This will be a front end of a one on one for Hazard, and he can't get it to fall. Here comes New Hampshire Tech. Two three zone again by Bristol. Jones in the corner. Ooh, pass. Canty can't get it to fall. Bayhawks pushing. Offensively, the Bayhawks, they really struggle. They really struggle to create their own shots. Ure keeps his dribble, gets it to the paint, and he's going to be fouled on the floor. And that foul is going to be on Richard Hartley. We get a substitution, number 14. 
Number 14, Andrew Fagans will come in. And number five, Jackson Ruwelk will step out. Stanley Ure hits the first free throw. Both teams have 18 fouls. So we'll be shooting free throws for the, for the rest of the way in the first half. 8-19 to play. 23-18. to 18. The Lynx with the lead. Second free throw, no good. Loose. Hazard amongst the trees. And he will, he will obtain the foul. Not obtain the foul, but he creates the foul. And that will send Bristol back to the free throw line. Hazel will, come, will go to the line. Try to cut into this lead a little bit more. Bristol started the season off with guns ablaze, and they started off 3-0. And, oh. and uh, kind of struggled towards the end of the first half of the season there before the holiday break as they try to get back on track and try to make that try to make a run towards postseason play. Of course Bristol Community College coached by Coach Brian Fernandes. Right, shooting one is Dion Hazard. And the, Bristol continues to struggle, especially Dion Hazard, surprisingly struggling from the free throw line. Jones in the corner. Cross-court pass. Another, another dangerous cross-court pass by Jones there. Tipped out of bounds by, knocked out of bounds by Hazard. Good hands. Also for the Bayhawks, number four, Hayden Canton in the game. And number 33, Jordan Mendes. And they're going to call a jump, and the possession arrow is going to be in favor of the Bayhawks. 7.51. 7.51 to go, 23 to 18. 23 to 18, New Hampshire Tech. Five-point lead. Here comes Hazard. Hazard back out. Mendes, the deep three. Short rims it. Ure grabs it, snatches it, gets it underneath to Aiden Rock. Uses his body nicely. And Aiden Rock doing what he does best. Hazard steals the inbound pass. Nice hustle play there by Hazard. Ure in the paint. Goes up strong with the left hand. And Bristol within one. Nice sequence there by Bristol. Good defense. Nice heads up play there by Deion Hazard. To steal the inbound pass. Hayden Kinn steals it. And then gets it to Jordan Mendes. Bristol getting on the floor. Doing dirty things. Doing dirty Bristol things. Kenton, Kenton to Ure, and they're going to call a jump ball there. And this time, they will give the possession to the Lynx. This is a low-scoring game. As, as impressive as I think uh, New Hampshire Tech has been, has been with the basketball and moving the basketball, they really haven't. They really haven't made shots. Jones kicks it back out. Three pointer by number twenty, and he's going to get. And they're going to call him for a travel. Not sure what the ref's seen there, but they're going to call number twenty, Omarion Miller, from Hartford, Connecticut, six foot one freshman guard. They call him for steps. So New Hampshire Tech turns the ball over. 
Hazard. And let's see who they call the foul on. They're going to call the foul on number three, Sean Riley. And that will send Bristol into the double bonus. So they'll be shooting two free throws from here on out. That's the 10th team foul on New Hampshire Tech. And Dion Hazard just can't buy a bucket from the free throw line. It seems like each one of his misses just like just pops out. Second free throw was good. And that does tie the game for Bristol. As much as they struggled here in the first half with their offense, the ball game is tied. Jumper, turnaround jumper from the elbow is no good. Rebounded by Mendes. And here's Ure. Ure all the way to the basket. And do they count it? They do count it. And they call the foul on Andrew Fagans. And somehow, some way, Ure flipped that one up on the drive and gets it to go and try, goes to the three point play now. Stanley Yu. Andrew Fagans will go out. And Omarion Miller will come out. And we're going to have a substitution. Joseph Canty back in, number two. And the free throw is good. And just like that, the Bayhawks, who trailed by six, now have a three-point lead. Turnaround jumper is no good. Rebounded by Jones. Oh, nice. Nice little block there by Aiden Rock. And it's going to be Bristol basketball. Jordan Mendes, number 33, will inbound for Bristol. 5.37 to play here in this first half. I want to thank everybody for joining us on our live stream on our YouTube, our Bristol Community College Bayhawks YouTube channel. As we get set here for the second half of the season for our Bristol Community College men and women's Bayhawks basketball. It is that time of year where football is winding down. It's going to be all basketball from here on out. Driving, stopping, popping. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Sean Riley. The jumper off the mark. Loose ball. Joseph Canty somehow comes away with it. Heads up play. Throws it off Aiden Rock, but it goes off Canty. He threw it off Rock, but it went off Canty before the ball could, before the ball could go out of bounds and ricocheted off Canty. Hazard trying to get away from Riley, kicks it back out. Hayden can't get it to fall. Aiden with the rebound puts it in. If it ain't Hayden, it's Aiden. <laughs> Don't be hating. And Bristol has a five-point lead. The Bristol bench getting into it. Ten on the shot clock. Three-pointers way off the mark. Underneath. The follow was no good. By number 33, couldn't get it to fall. Bristol with the lead in the basketball. Ure. Oh, he's got the matchup here, but he picks up his dribble. Mendes from the wing for three. Oh, can't get it to go. Rebounded by number 33. Riley, way deep. Short. Oh, nice save. Up, 
Brian Fernandez, yellow matchup. They'll call. They'll probably play man to man here on the inbound. Jaden Delumba comes in for Hayden. For Hayden. Hayden Caton, who did a good job while he was in there. Nice hustle plays. Joseph Canty can't knock the three down. Tough rebound by Jordan Mendes. Jordan Mendes, he's given the Bayhawks a physical presence. And the three is way off. Rebounded by Can Canty. Long pass, and he's going to step out of bounds. Anthony Gothier, the pass was too long. Anthony Gothier hauled it in, but he stepped on the end line, stepped out of bounds. DeLumba, this is a good matchup right here. DeLumba being guarded by Joseph Canty. DeLumba being double teamed in the corner. Torres going, going up, and he's going to get fouled by number 33. Doctor, who is that number 33? Terrence Lee, he also hails from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Who is that masked man? That masked man with the man bun. He committed the foul. Jonathan Torres, he'll step up to the line. And that one bounces out. Number five, Jackson Ruelk is back in. And number 33, Terrence Lee will step out. Second free throw is no good. Rebounded by the big man, Jonathan Jones. Oh, nice pass there. Nice ball movement. Three-pointer in the corner. It's good by Sean Riley. Driving and kicking was Canty. They swung it to the corner. And Sean Riley knocks it down. That was nice ball movement there. Hazard kicks it back out. Nice tight defense there. By the, uh, by the Lynx. Oh, that ball's way off. Rebounded by Riley. Too many contested shots by Bristol. I mean, the wide open links, the wide open looks they are getting, they're not making, they're not making, but they're forcing shots like that. Got to get things going to the basket. Yeah, when the Bayhawks get the basketball, it's just very, very stagnant. One or, two, one or two guys are touching the ball. You know, one or two guys are trying to do, you know, whatever with the basketball. It's not the way that New Hampshire is moving the basketball. Everybody's touching it. They're swinging around the perimeter. The ball's going inside. The ball's going outside. It's not sticking with, it's not sticking with one person. And you've got to do that against the zone, especially like, especially like Bristol's. The free throw was missed. Canty tracks it down. Like a freight train goes into traffic. And they're going to call a foul on Dion Hazard with the. What a hustle there by Canty. Off the, off the missed free throw, goes in the backcourt and grabs it, then comes in like a locomotive. As small as he is, like a little locomotive. Like the little engine that could gets to the basket, and he's going to go to the free throw line for two. And he knocks it down. And Joseph Canty hits the first free throw, ties the game. The little engine that could. Second free throw is good. And those two points, that's all hustle. All hustle by that man right there. Joe Canty. And he gives them a lead. He gives them a one-point lead. Hazard flashes to the free throw line. Being guarded closely by number 11. Kick to the corner to Lumba. Can't get it to fall. And they're going to call a. 
And on the rebound, they're going to call a foul on Shine Riley. Yeah, they're going to call him for pushing off underneath. He pushed off to get that rebound. And both teams are in the double bonus. Aiden Rock will step up to the free throw line. And he'll step up to the line for two. Bristol continues to struggle and struggle mightily from the free throw line. Second free throw was no good. If Bristol could hit their free throws, they'd probably be up by six or seven or eight by, eight by now. 29-28. 20 minutes of basketball, college basketball, on the 29-28. Riley, the drive and the kick. Three-pointer by Lee, knocks it down. Nice stroke. And uh, the Lynx have a four-point lead after being down five. Oh, lay Aiden. I'm sorry, to Lumba, to Aiden. Nice pass. 32-30. Need more of that. Solo by DeLumba. DeLumba flips it up. And they're going to call a foul. And they're going to call a foul on number 11, Anthony Gothier. His teammates help him up. He hit the deck hard. Didn't have position. And Jaden DeLumba will come up here and try to tie this game. What a rush we've had here the last few minutes. Minute seven to go. Both teams picking up the pace a little bit. Trying to push the basketball, trying to... We've seen hustle plays. Guys diving on the basketball, block shots. People, you know, got players sacrificing their body. See some good defense. Not, not so great offense. And we've seen a lot of missed free throws. With the, it's been the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sean Riley, and I think that's, that foul is going to be on Jaden DeLumba. And shooting two will be Sean Riley. Actually, I'm not sure who that foul was on. It was either on DeLumba or Jordan Mendy, number 33. Both teams have been in serious foul trouble, though. A lot of fouls, a lot of, a lot of free throw shots. Not a lot of makes. First free throw is good by Sean Riley. Second free throw was good. And the Lynx have a, another four-point lead. And another foul, and that's going to be on Lee, and that's going to send Stanley Uray back to the line. This one's been pretty much tight. Oh, it's been pretty tight for the first half. You know, New Hampshire, New Hampshire Tech, they had a six-point lead. They... They hung on to that for a little bit, and then Bristol had a little surge. They went up five. They were up 28 to 23. They had a five-point lead. And then New Hampshire's had a little run, and now they're up three as it stands right now. Three-pointer in the corner by Jones. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Canny. Knocked away by Ure. Gets the pass on to Lumba, and what a block. What a block there by Sean Riley. A good defense there by Joe Canny. And the Lynx will look to hold on. Maybe what could be the last shot. There's a three, four-second differential. 
Jones drives to the basket easily, puts it up with the left hand. The six foot nine Jones. And now Bayhawks should have the last shot. They're down five. Ure being guarded by Terrence Lee. Ure stops and pops the three pointer, and he'll get fouled on the three pointer, and he'll go to the line for three. With three seconds left in the first half. That's a bad foul there by, I mean, that's a, that's a fadeaway, step back, desperation shot. Terrence Lee has to be more disciplined on that. If foul, the foul there, your team is up by five. Stanley Ure, I mean, that, wasn't a, that was not a high percentage shot. But he'll hit the free throw there. And he can, pull, he can pull Bristol within two. And obviously we have a second half to go, a whole second half to go. And Stanley Ure doing something that Bristol hasn't done, make free throw shots. And we'll see if he can make all three. Can't get it to fall. Let's see, and there will be no attempt here at the end of the half, but that one pick up, as they say, business is picking up, and it's 36 to 33 at the half. The New Hampshire Technical Institute, the Lynx, have a three-point lead on your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. It's halftime here from the Taunton Center. I'm David Cardoso here with Michelle D., and uh, thank you for joining us, and stay tuned for a second half action as we'll take a break here. And we'll be right back with more Bayhawks basketball. Stay tuned for the second half in just a little bit. At the half. All right, this halftime report is brought to you by all of our friends at FRC Media. 36 to 33, New Hampshire Technical Institute. They're Division II. And this is the first meeting between these two schools. And at halftime, New Hampshire Technical Institute, their leading scorers in the first half were James Jones, a six-foot-nine freshman from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, had 10 points. Joe Canney, the freshman, had eight points. And Sean Riley was in, had 12 points and had some nice assists. Bristol Community College, led by their sophomore. Deion Hazard, well, he had seven. They were actually led by their freshman, Stanley Ure, number, th number, number five. He had 13 points, and Aiden Rock was integral on the inside. He had eight points. And those are your leading scorers brought to you by FRC Media. And we're underway here in the second half. Again, I'm David Cardoza. Here on the call, on the commentary. Defense, 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 okay. And the Lynx with the basketball. Against the zone. Again, they keep that ball moving. Jones. And he'll pick up the, free, he'll pick up the foul there. And he'll step up to the line. Again, a lot of motion, a lot of good ball movement. Chris passing by the Lynx. But Bristol, they've hung right in there. And Jones, that one is way off the mark. As we're just getting underway here in the second half. Again, Happy New Year to all. Hope everybody had a safe holiday. And thank you for joining us here on this live stream. As we bring you a new year of Bayhawks basketball, they're down four. I talked to Coach Brian Fernandez at halftime. He said, we're hanging in there. And that's big right now. The jumper is no good. Re rebounded by Joe Canny. Canny runs it to his own teammate. The big man maintains his dribble. Canny from the top. Short rims it. And the ball is going to stay there. And they're going to call a foul. I think they're going to call a push. 
Uh, Mo Sec, number 30. They inbound the basketball. Jones goes around Mosek, but he comes up way short. Mosek using his body there. You're right, picks up. Step back for Ure is short. Delumba tried to swarm in there, and it'll be off Delumba. Long way to go on this one. They swing it around on the zone. Riley brings it back out. Lee puts it to the floor. Keeps his pivot foot. Ten on the shot clock. Good defense here by Bristol. Lee pulls the trigger from three. No good. Up. And Mosek with the rebound. Hazard gets it knocked away. Nice hustle there by Anthony Rothier. Gothier. Knocks it out of bounds. Stolen away. Canny gets it to Lee, and he'll be followed by Jaden DeLumba. And Lee will step up to the free throw line. Number 21, Braylon Johnson, the sophomore. He is in the game. We didn't see much of him in the first half. He starts the second half for Bristol. First free throw is good by Lee. Terrence Lee. Again, New Hampshire Technical Institute. They are not Region 21. They're a Division II team. in the NJCAA. Loose ball on the floor, Mosek goes down for it. The two big men go down for it. And Mosek, he's holding his arm. That doesn't look too good as he does. Coach Fernandes will come out. And the Bristol trainer. Never like to see these injuries. And as uh, most sec is being attended to, we'll take a break here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks broadcasting network. Okay, so Mosek was able to walk off the court under his own accord, holding his holding his arm. And we hope he's okay and hope he can come back in the game. They could use him. They could definitely use his height, use his size. With James Jones to come to combat James Jones, a six foot nine center. We have a timeout on the floor, and we'll take another timeout here. We'll be right back after this. All right, we're back here from the Taunton Center, Bristol Community College's Taunton campus, the main campus, obviously in Fall River. 
Massachusetts. They get it inside to James Jones, and he'll lose it out of bounds. Wait, what? 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 What in the world? I thought the ball was out of bounds. The ball was a, was a live ball? I thought they said it was out of bounds. Don't ask me what happened, ladies and gentlemen, but they <laughs> the link scored. Braylon Johnson. Nice entry pass there by Hazard, and Johnson scores. Long pass up to Jones. Try to get it off the alley-oop. Comes up short. Ure falls to the floor. And they're going to call that foul on Joseph Canny. All right, weird sequence there. Bristol finds themselves down five. Has a nice turnaround. Can't get it to fall. Jones in the open court gets it to Riley. And Dion Hazel will knock it out of bounds. But they're gonna say, they're gonna say it was last touched by Sean Riley. <laughs> this is a Twilight Zone moment right here. So Dion Hazel with a heads up defensive play, trailing the play, knocked it, knocked it away from Riley, and Riley lost it. It must have went off Riley. And Hazard runs in. Runs into James Jones. Probably one guy you don't want to run into on the floor or in a dark alley. And that's a second team foul on, on the Lynx. Foul committed by James Jones. <laughs> All right, and here comes the uh, the moist, moisture reduction crew. <laughs> the MRC, a little, almost have a little drip drip on the floor, a little slippery slope. This game has been a slippery slope. Back and forth, 40 to 35 is the score. 20 seconds on the shot clock, 1641. Long way to go on this one. Don't go away as Bristol hangs in there. This is a non conference game for Bristol. As I mentioned earlier, I digress, it was a Region 21 matchup, but this is not a Region 21 matchup. This is New Hampshire Technical Institute. They are Division II, and, and right now, Bayhawks, they are hanging right in there. Johnson. Dirty possession here, and they're gonna call back and forth. Backcourt violation by Stanley Ure. Twenty on the shot clock. Moving that basketball. Good communication. Love the way they spin it. Oh, nice dish by Lee inside to Jones. Can't get it to fall. And they're going to toss. I don't know. Brandon Johnson is being tossed out. And they're going to call a technical foul. I believe it is on Braylon Johnson. And these last couple of minutes, some of it's gone over my head.
at the free throw line. Andrew Fagans can't make the technical free throw shot. He's shooting two. And Mosek looks like he's okay. He's, he's number 30 for Bristol. Looks like he's going to come back in the game. He is back in the game. And Andrew Fagans misses both free throws. And now James Jones will step up to the line to see if the Lynx can get something out of the sequence, which could have been a four-point sequence, which could have been a big swing in this game. And James Jones will step up to the line. Nobody can make free throws. I mean, it's just borderline embarrassing at this point for both teams. And the Lynx, they had a chance to really take a major swing in this game and give themselves their largest lead of the game. The second free throw just bounces in. Largest lead of the game for both teams. Six point lead is the largest lead of the game. The last time, the last time there was a six point lead, the Lynx had, oh, Zalumba, straight pass to the basket. But you can see that coming all the way. James Jones closes in and blocks that out of the park. Oh, he knocked the. Oh, he knocked that. He he literally knocked that one out of the park. <laughs> Seen it all now, folks. Like I said, this is a twilight. These last few minutes have been like a twilight zone. What a block. But Jaden Delumba showed no fear, went to right to the basket. Oh, Hazard taking it right at the big man with no fear. And James Jones could have blocked that one, and Hazard will step up to the line to try to get a three-point play. That's a great take by Hazard, especially after seeing that block there by Jones on Delumba. And Hazard goes right at Jones. I'm not sure, and he cannot hit a free throw. Deion Hazard, I'm going to take you to free throw for some free throw lessons, son. Courtesy of David Cardoza. Jumper in the corner is no good. DeLumba going all the way to the basket. Out of control, though. Ball is loose. And it will be Bristol basketball, and I believe there, there's a foul on the play. Andrew Fagans will be substituted by number five. Jackson Ruelk. Short jumper. Hazard can't get it to fall. And Deion Hazard has struggled from the field. They're going to need him down the stretch, though. They're going to win this game. It's going to be Hazard time. One of the leaders and one of the leading scorers on this team. Number 22, Kevin Newton Delgado. I believe this is his first appearance in this game. He comes in for the Lynx. Inbound to Link. I mean, to Ure. And uh, Joseph Canty can't believe it. He thought he had a clean block. The block from behind. And we'll see if Ure can sink a couple free throws. These refs, they are not swallowing their whistle. They're calling everything. Any contact at all. First free throw was pretty all net by Stanley Ure. Don't go away, ladies and gentlemen. We're just getting started. Joe Canny, the little engine that could, will 
will come out. Number 20, Omarion Miller comes into the game. Second free throw is no good. And it'll be New Hampshire basketball. Three-point lead. Ooh, Goth Gothier thought about it. They swing it to Hartley. Bayhawks in 2-3 zone. The jumper by Ruelk. Try to get it over Mosek. Comes up short. And now a loose ball on the floor. Mosek is back on the floor diving for it. That's how we got hurt before. And Coach Brian Fernandez, the Bayhawks, will call timeout. 41 to 38. We'll keep it here. A three-point lead for New Hampshire. They're clinging on to this one, but this has been a scrappy, intensified, energetic game. Both teams displaying a lot of intensity and a lot of energy. But the, uh, the offense has not been good for either team. New Hampshire, they've been crisp. They've been moving the basketball. They've been moving well without the basketball. Motion offense. They're just not, they just haven't been able to make shots. And no team has been able to make perimeter shots. And that's why you have a 41 to 38 ball game. Both teams struggling from the perimeter. We'd love to see those shooting percentages. My guess would be in the 20s. Looks like the Lynx are picking up man to man. Yure loses the basketball. Mosek trailing the play. Here's Hartley. Three pointer, no good. Loose ball going up, going up for it is Hartley, and he gets the he gets the Lynx a second opportunity. Delgado can't get it to fall. And let's see who they call the foul on. They call an offensive. They call the offensive foul on number 22, Kevin Newton Delgado. And that will put Bristol at the free throw line. Bristol's now in the bonus. That's a 17 foul on the visiting Lynx. So they're in the penalty. And Dion Hazard makes a free throw. Second free throw is no good. Bristol trails by two. Again, if they hit their free throws, they're probably up by 10. Knocked away by Hazard. But then picking it up is Gothier. Gets the friendly roll. Anthony Gothier, six foot three sophomore. Again, New Hampshire, they had the experience. Deep three by Stanley Ure. Long rebound by Degato. Nice pass to Gothier. What a block! Hazard! Creating a hazard on the inside and then telegraphing that pass. Going back the other way and drawing the foul. What hustle there by Kevin Newton Delgado, who came into this game, and they're going to call a foul on Dion Hazard. Dion Hazard had a tremendous block on the other end. Just bad offense, bad, big mistakes on the other end, and they turn the ball over, and Delgado's at the free throw line. He extends the Lynx lead to five. Whole lot of time left in this one. Before you know it, both teams are going to be in the bonus. Six team fouls for the Bayhawks. Seven already in the penalty is the Lynx. Both free throws are good. Again, matching the largest lead. 
six point lead. Largest lead of the ball game. The Lynx matching up man to man right now. DeLumba for three. Oh, can't get it to fall. Long pass for Delgado to Gauthier. Can't get it to fall. And following up is number 20, Omarion Miller with the putback. And this is the largest lead of the game. Ure gets it to the paint. And they'll call a blocking foul. And they'll call the blocking foul on number 22. Kevin Newton Delgado. Stanley Ure at the line. First free throw was good. Stanley Ure from Providence, Rhode Island. Went to classical high school. He's in his freshman year. One of the top scorers for the Bayhawks. They trail by seven. Second free throw. It's good. Pulls the Bayhawks back within six. Coming up on the 13 minute mark. Bayhawks with that zone. Nice kick there in the corner. They get it inside to Delgado. And he found number five. Jackson Ruelk in the corner with a short, short jumper, 10 footer. That gave the, this gives the Lynx an eight point lead. Hazard takes it to the basket, strong. Can't get the roll and it's gonna be Lynx basketball. And we have a substitution. Sean Riley comes in for Hartley. That ball sails out of bounds, and they're going to say it's off Ure, or it's off the Bayhawks. Stanley Ure didn't think so. Refs say otherwise. Riley. Bakes kicks it out. Delgado. They flash Delgado high. He tried to find a cutting Riley. Bayhawks with good defense there. They knock it out of bounds, and there's five on the shot clock. Bayhawks will match up. They kick it out, three-pointer. It's an open look. It's way off the mark. Doesn't hit the rim. And it'll be a shot clock violation. And it'll be Bayhawks basketball. Good defense there by the Bayhawks to force a turnover. They trail by eight. Obviously not insurmountable, 12-0-1 to play here in the second half. Again, we're live from the Taunton Center, home of your Bristol Bayhawks. Stay tuned for Saturday afternoon. We get a day full of basketball. The men and the Bristol Bayhawks men and women's team will be will be here on the court here at the uh, the Taunton Center. We'll have the women at one. The ba the women Bayhawks team followed by the men. We have a doubleheader. January basketball. Hazard, back up to Hayden Caton. Hazard, the jumper, can't get it to fall. And boy, he struggled out there today. It seems like nothing's going Dion Hazard's way from the uh, shooting from the outside. Or the inside, or the free throw line. It's been a tough day for him. And Sean Riley, both teams are in the bonus now. Sean Riley will step up to the free throw line. Yeah. 
And let's see what they call here. Free throw was missed. Controversy. Whose basketball is it? It's going to be Bayhawks basketball. Not sure what all the hub bubble's about, but Bayhawks trail by eight. They have to go the length of the court here, and they are picking up, picking up pressure here. At the links, Hazard kicks it back out. Ure for three. Can't get it to go. Aiden is there. But then rebound by Dion Hazard. Hazard with the offensive putback. 11 and a half to go. Riley lost it. Hazard, oh, bad turnover there. Going back the other way, number 20. And they're going to call a foul on Aiden Rock. And they're going to call a blocking foul, and the basket is scored by number 20, Omarion Miller. Aiden Rock says he was in the circle, but he was not. And... Uh, he thought he was going to pick up a charge there. Aiden Rock, he's good for that. He's like a rock. He'll, he'll sacrifice his body. He'll take a charge. Trying to break the press. The Bayhawks being pressured now. And Ure. Ooh. Ure gets it stripped away, but they're going to call a foul. And Stanley Ure will go to the free throw line. And the Bayhawks are in the pen. I mean, the Bayhawks are in the bonus. They're in the double bonus right now. That's 10 team fouls by the visiting Lynx. They are in the double penalty. So the Bayhawks will be shooting two free throws from here on out. Actually, both teams will be pretty soon. And there's 11 minutes to go. So a long way to go. So if you hit your free throws in this one, you can stay in this game or increase the lead if you're the Lynx. Ure hits the first free throw. Second free throw is good. Ure's been good from the free throw line. He's probably been the best shooter from the free throw line today. Pulls them to within seven. 11 minutes to go. They get it inside. Fadeaway hooked there by number 24. Couldn't get it to go. 24. And Stanley Ure fighting for the basketball. It's a jump ball. And when I say number 24, that's Tyler Lovely making one of his first appearances in this game. I think his first appearance, he's a sophomore, six foot five from Fremont, New Hampshire. 10.52. They're going to say the possession arrow is in favor of New Hampshire Tech. A lot of waiting around. All right, ref, ref blows his whistle. Ball in play. In the corner, Riley for three. Knocks it down. Dagger three. Sean Riley. And that's the biggest lead of the game right there. Aiden Rock kicks it to the corner. What is the call? Yeah. 
and they're going to call it. Bayhawks turn the ball over. 55 to 45, 10 minutes and 37 seconds to go. Timeout on the floor, and we'll be right back here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks broadcasting network. Hey, we're back. 10.37 to play. God, we still got a ways to go on this one. 10-point lead by New Hampshire, so I guess that was a foul. There was a foul away from the basketball in the last possession by the Bayhawks. Not sure why we're not seeing more pressure. Especially with this game hanging in the balance, we're not seeing any full court pressure or any pressing or half court traps by the Bayhawks. We're used to seeing that in years past and in games past. Ruelk. Number 23, the jumper is good. Smooth jumper there by number 23. He comes off the bench, Jonathan Hernandez. Sophomore guard. And Jordan Mendes will lose that. Jordan Mendes loses that off his leg as the pressure starts to mount. And we're up on 10.05 to play. And uh, New Hampshire starting to impose their will a little bit. As you can see the experience and you can see just the way they play like a Division II program. The jumper, the pullback jumper from number five is no good. Ball does hit the rim, no shot clock violation. Ball stays in play, Ure fires that one off the glass too hard. Loose basketball, a lot of bodies on the floor. Jeez Louise. And like I said, both teams are now in the double bonus, so they'll both be shooting two free throws from here on out. Foul is on the Bayhawks. Sean Riley will go to the line for two. First free throw is a miss. Second free throw is good. 13 point lead by the Lynx. As they'll pick up, they'll match up man to man. And their bench, their bench is loud. Hazard pulls up, 18 footer, it's good off the glass. 11 point lead, going to the basket, and they're gonna call travel. Yeah, one too many steps. Try to step around the Bayhawks defender and just, yeah. Trying to trap at half court as the Lynx. Ure, back up to Hazard. Hazard into the paint, and he'll draw the foul. I mean, that's what you want to see right now, especially if you're Coach Brian Fernandez. You want that ball zipping. You want that ball zipping around. But not only that, you want guys driving to the hole. And at this point, driving to the hole and drawing fouls. Because both teams are in the bonus. So drive to the basket. And most likely, the way these refs are calling, they're, they're calling a tight game. Everything's a foul. Second free throw, and Dion Hazard connects on both of them. And if you're Bristol, you don't have to get it all in one swoop. Ooh, Hazard guarding Riley close. Bayhawks, they're matching up man to man. Ten on the shot clock. Drive it to the basket, up and under, double pump, no good. New shot clock. Nice hustle play there by number 
20. Nice pass to Lovely, it's good. Number 20 on the drive, Omarion Miller gets it to Tyler Lovely. And it's 11 point lead with eight to go. Yes, this is a home game for the Bayhawks. Oh, nice pass there by Ruelk. I can't hear myself think, and that's number 23, Jonathan Hernandez, on, the, on a nice pass by Ruelk underneath. I mean, to get, yeah, <laughs> it's loud. Loose basketball, Riley going to the rack, puts it up with the left hand, and, and it's a 15-point lead, and that's the largest lead of the ball game. And if you hear that cheering, it's not the Bristol faithful, unfortunately. It's the New Hampshire Technical Institute bench. Yeah, they, I mean, that, that New Hampshire bench, I mean, they, they sound like 15,000 people right now. Bayhawks have the lead late in the second and late in the first half. They were up as many as five. Second half. They trailed by three, 41 to 38. And since 41 to 38, New Hampshire has outscored, New Hampshire has outscored them 23 to eight. Second free throw was good by Hazard. 14 point lead. Bayhawks are gonna need some stops. The floater, no good. Rebounded by Braylon Johnson. If you're the Bayhawks, I mean, you don't got much time here. You gotta push the basketball, it's a lumba. Jaden Jalumba, appreciate the effort. He goes, into a, he goes into a pile of burgundy jerseys, hoping to pick up the foul and does not. Good hands there. Jonathan Torres will push it. Torres goes to the rack. Up and under move, and they're going to call an offensive foul. I see a lot of one-man isolation basketball or one or two men one or two men offenses with the Bayhawks. Where three-pointer, it's good. Three-pointer by number 20, Omarion Miller. And you look at the um, the way New Hampshire has played, they've really turned up the Jets. A lot of guys, a lot of different players getting in on the scoring. DeLumba drives and kicks out to Braylon Johnson, who goes to the rack. And they will count it off the glass it goes. Sixty-seven to fifty-two. Bristol has to play with more of a sense of urgency here. As number eleven will come in for Tyler Lovely, number eleven, Anthony Gothier. This can't complete the three-point play. Braylon Johnson misses the free throw. Six minutes to play. Bristol's the one who has to play with a sense of urgency. Three-pointer by number 20. Can't get it to fall. DeLumba in the open court. Kicks it back out to Braylon Johnston. Off the side of the rim. Rebounded by number 20. Look at that speed. Nice dish. The speed gets it to the paint, draws the defender, and flips it off to number five. I'm sorry, number 11, Anthony Gothier. Seventeen point lead to Lumba. Three pointer. There's just a lid on it for, for Bristol right now. Hazard's jumper is no good. 
And we're going to have a loose ball foul, and it's going to be on number 13, Aiden Rock. I believe, and Aiden Rock is going to go out of this game. I believe. Well, you can see why this team is uh, is playing like a Division II team, like a higher higher level Division II team. And also, when you talk about the, um, you talk about the experience. Counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine sophomores on this team. Talking about New Hampshire Tech. They get a coach that's been around the game for a long time. And they're up 18. Five minutes to play. Just good D right now, good solid D. By New Hampshire Tech. Hazard finds Braylon Johnson, I mean finds Mendes in the corner. And they're gonna say he's on the line. They won't give him the three, they'll give him a long two. And we're gonna take a short second, pay some bills. <laughs> we'll be right back here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. <laughs> Sounds good. Oh Lord. Yeah. Okay. All right, the bills are paid. <laughs> Thank God for electronic payments. 70 to 54. The New Hampshire Technical Institution taking the long Bus ride here. Whoa. Dion Hazard coming our way. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that. But it'll be uh, Lynx basketball. The inbound. Holy cow. Jumper no good by Gothier. Delumba kicks it back out. Mendes going to the basket, puts it up, no good. Nice snag by Hernandez. Got it back after that, having it deflected. Oh, Hernandez. Wow, they're gonna score the basket and they're gonna call the foul. And I believe they're going to call a technical foul on Jonathan Torres. What do they say he did? Sean Riley will go to the line, shoot the technical, add more insult to injury. Whatever Torres, whatever Jonathan Torres did was on the ground. When Hernandez was standing over him after the basket. Nonetheless, a 19 point lead. A weird game. Torres. Can't get it to fall. Has it with the rebound. Johnson, I mean, Mendes. Boy, outside shots down at a premium. Gothier gets his own rebound. Hernandez 
can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Mendes. Mendes, he's, he's not afraid to shoot. Holy cow. Long pass and laying it in is Ruel. And New Hampshire piling it on the Bayhawks right now. I'll tell you what, the Bayhawks, they, they play stagnant. They look tired and they're playing tired right now. Too much hero ball. Braylon Johnson goes to the rack and lays that one in. Hernandez, three-pointer no good. Rebounded by Braylon Johnson. The funny thing is New Hampshire's still playing hard. Dish. The dish by Hazard to Torres. And Torres will step up to the line for two. Jonathan Torres, a freshman. He hails from right here at Taunton, Massachusetts. I know Coach Brian Fernandes has to be, has to be frustrated. His team was hanging in there first half. Lingered around in the first early going to the second half, and then New Hampshire Tech just imposed their will, used their speed, their size, their experience. and started just playing better offensively. As far as getting the ball in the, in the hole. Yeah, I think the Bayhawks, their 2-3 defense, I think New Hampshire Tech took a while for them to figure it out. But then just a lot of forced errors, a lot of forced errors by the Bayhawks, turning the ball over. Being in foul trouble, I mean, New Hampshire Tech was in foul trouble too. But just some, some silly plays, some errant plays by the Bayhawks, and New Hampshire Tech just eventually took advantage of it. When you're an experienced team and you're playing on the level of New Hampshire Tech, you t start to take, eventually you're going to take advantage Eventually, you're going to take advantage of, the, of, of a team that's making those mistakes. And I think the lack of size definitely hurts the... Oh, nice pass by Delumba to a cutting hazard. That was a great pass. All right, and a timeout on the floor. We'll keep it here. 75 to 59. This one almost in the bag here for New, Ham for New Hampshire. Again, stay tuned for our doubleheader this Saturday. Friday is January. Friday is. The Friday the 13th. <laughs> be afraid, be very afraid. <laughs> Fortunately, no games on Friday the 13th. We got games on Saturday afternoon, starting at one. The Bristol women will be on the floor. Where was this pressure earlier? I mean, you're going to stop pressure in the ball. You're going to stop pressure in New Hampshire now with two minutes to go. I would, I would have liked to have seen that earlier. When the game was hanging in the balance,
So both Bayhawks teams, the men and the women, will be in action against University of Connecticut at Avery Point. So join us, please join us for that. That'll be Region 21. That'll be Region 21 basketball as UCAP takes a trip up to Taunton. Bayhawks is playing discouraged right now. A lot of games, a lot of important games, a lot of conference games for the Bayhawks. Three-pointer by Hayden. Kayton gets it to fall. Boy, Bristol could have used more of that as they apply some pressure here in the backcourt. And the foul is going to be on Hayden Kayton. They could have used it. They could have used a little bit more of his hustle and his grit. as we haven't seen him much in the second half. 13 point lead. That's number 21 who's in the game now, Elijah Flock. He hails from Woodsville, New Hampshire, freshman guard, five foot 11. Everybody getting in on the action for the Lynx. Second free throw was good. We haven't seen that much too much. Two, free, two consecutive free throws made, Hazard. Finds Kayton for three, nails it. Boy, we could have used that kid. Within 12, probably going to be a little bit too late. Ooh, I thought he was on the end line. Hayden Kayton, the young man, definitely um, brings the energy. He hails from Swansea, Massachusetts. Went to Joseph Case High School. Case, part of the South Coast Conference. Used to play Case back in the day. I went to Wareham High School. And we used to kick their butts. <laughs> Case used to have the colors of the, of the New Hampshire Technical Institute. The, uh, the cranberry or whatever you want to call it, the, the burgundy with the, with the gold or the yellow, whatever you want to call that. The Case Cardinals. Two consecutive threes by Hayden Caton. Pulls this to within 12, but I, I'm afraid this is going to be, I'm afraid Bristol's going to run out of time. But they definitely held their own. <laughs> with the Division II team. From our brothers up there and our sisters, or whatever you want to call it, from New Hampshire. DeLumba. Now let's see. Need a good possession here. Here's Caton. Caton taking it to his own hands. This kid's a scoring machine right now. Where was where's he been? Eight consecutive points, eight points. Eight points in like less than a minute. Yeah, he has the last eight points for Bristol. Unbelievable. Two threes and then a nice drive to the basket. Puts it about the glass. And he took matters to his own hand into his own hands. I bet you he has the best shooting percentage for any Bayhawk today. I can tell you right now, he's our Dozy Award winner for today. His hustle, he exemplifies that Bayhawk's grit, the G-R-I-T. And he's the only one that's really made any noise today for the Bayhawks. He definitely has some hustle points in the first half. Three-pointer. Oh, oh, that one almost dropped. Right now, we'll just back off and give it to Hayden. And 
going to call a foul on Stanley Ure. James Jones will step up to the line. First free throw is no good. At the end of the day, this one will look like it wasn't too bad to a Division II team. Stanley Ure. Draws a foul, he'll step up to the free throw line. Foul's going to be on Sean Riley. Or actually, it might have been on Jonathan Hernandez, number 23. First free throw was good. <laughs> definitely a lot of good things, some good things for the Bayhawks, a lot of but definitely a lot of teaching points. You know, but definitely good for them to face some good competition. A team like New Hampshire has got a lot of talented athletic players with a lot of speed and agility. And they definitely played well together as a team. I think, I think a team like the Bayhawks can definitely learn from a team like this. And they've held in there. They've hung in there. But they haven't hung well enough. Wait a, wait a minute. <laughs> I mean, it could have been better. Second free throw is good. 81 to 68. Jaden DeLumba pulls up the three short. Hayden Kagan still fighting. Nice pass. And New Hampshire still playing basketball the right way. And picking up the foul is Jonathan Hernandez. We didn't see much of him in the first half, if at all. Second half, he's, he's really been one of their better players. Coming off the bench. Number 23, Jonathan Hernandez from New Britain, Connecticut. Again, he's a sophomore guard. He's six foot three. Again, they have a lot of guys that are over six foot. From the guard position, like a Andrew Fagans, number 14, he's 6'4. Omarion Miller, who's come off the bench and given this team a boost, number 20, he's 6'1. Jonathan Hernandez, he's 6'3. He just sunk a two free throws. 15-point lead. Hazard for three. And again, a little bit too late. Hazard finally gets one to go from the outside. And the Lynx can, oh, good defense there by the Bayhawks playing hard to the end. You always want to see that. Get it to within single digits. Ure does just that. But again, time is going to expire on the Bayhawks today. And it's been a good, good effort. And uh, Sean Riley dribbles it out for the Lynx. The final score from the Taunton campus here, the, the Taunton Center. 83 to 74, the New Hampshire Technical Institution, the Lynx, come in here. They take the long drive, and on the Bayhawks' home court, they get a nine point victory. For David Cardoza and Michelle D., you've been watching Bayhawks basketball here on FRC Media. Join us this Saturday for more Bayhawks basketball. The women's Bayhawks, Bristol Bayhawks team, will take on UCAP, University of Connecticut at Avery Point at one. And then the Bayhawks, the men's team, this team right here, coached by Brian Fernandes, they will be on at three. The Dozie Award winner, Hayden Caton, came in with a flurry, eight points 
in a very short period of time, and he just exemplifies what a Bayhawk is, grit. All right, the final score, A3 to 74. Stay tuned this Saturday for our doubleheader, and thank you for joining us on our Bayhawks YouTube channel, and uh, have a safe and great evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.